Hi everyone, what if I was to tell you, you can save up to 5 watts of your riding power by just paying a little attention to your chain. Well, you can, and here's how to do it. So let's just say you're an 80 kilogram rider, and together with your bike, your clothes, your shoes, your water and your food, let's say mm, another 8, say 9 kilograms, you'll be able to save yourself one and a half kilograms on your next hill climb. <laughs> that's right, that's like taking two full water bottles off your bike next time you go up the hill. How is it possible? It's the way you treat your chain. Yep, the chain is the hardest wearing, highest friction part of your bicycle. And a little attention is going to save you that power. And it's also a great side benefit, increasing the life of your chain, Therefore, your cogs and your front chain rings up to twice as much. Yep, that's going to save you big dollars in the long run. So what do we all do to our chains? We lubricate them, don't we? We grab our u butte lube, whatever it is, we put it on, and we go for a couple of rides. All sounds nice and smooth and everything. And we get back from a couple of rides, wipe your finger on your chain or a clean rag, and what have you got? It's not the colour of the lubricant you put on. It's blacky grey. What is that? It's dirt, dust and tiny metal particles on your chain. It's acting as a grinding paste on your chain, cogs and your front chain ring. Not only that, it's getting in between your links on your chain in the pins and the rollers, wearing out the life of your chain and sapping your power. So what do you do now? You go out and buy a more expensive lubricant and you're on the merry-go-round trying all these different formulas. Here's one that says, cleans as well as lubricates your chain. So you put it on liberally as it says, go for your ride, come back, wipe your finger or your rag on the chain. It's still there. It's a different colour. It's that grinding paste again. So all you've done by adding more is dilute that grinding paste. It's still there. So what do you do? You have to clean your chain before you lubricate it. So... How do you properly clean your chain? That's what we're going to look at in this video. So let's go and have a look at the best ways to clean your chain. And here they are. An ultrasonic cleaner, clip-on brush type cleaner, and our homemade cleaner from a previous video, which you can make yourself, of course. Which one's the best way to clean your chain? That's what we're going to do. We're going to find out which one's going to clean the chain the best way. So let's go out to the workshop. Right, so here's our three chains, one for each cleaner, and each chain is the same model Shimano 10-speed chain. They've all been ridden 180k to 200k's each on the road bike in dry conditions. And prior to being ridden, they've been cleaned with the homemade chain cleaner and lubed with the homemade paraffin wax. So, let's go ahead. Firstly, we'll do number one, and that's with the ultrasonic cleaner. So here's our chains in order, one, two, and three, hanging on a drying board. And this is what they look like before they're cleaned. Having a close look, number one. That doesn't look too dirty. That'll be for the ultrasonic cleaner. Number two, this is for the brush cleaner. That's fairly dirty. You can see some wax on the links there on the outside. And number three, that'll be for the homemade cleaner. Oh yes, there's definitely some build up there. So we'll do chain number one first, and we're going to use the ultrasonic cleaner. If you haven't seen one before and not familiar with it, we'll have a quick tour. This is what that looks like inside, a bit like a fryer actually. A little basket in there that you can remove. And so it's a small stainless steel tank, and the ultrasonic sound is emitted through the base. So we'll pop the basket back in, and the chain sits in the basket, and we put in our chemicals, degreaser, laundry liquid and top it up with water. With this unit we can heat up the chemicals as well. 60 degrees I've set it at and I already boiled the kettle so it's 57 almost there. And the timer, we'll set the timer for 15 minutes. So there's our chain in there being cleaned and as you can see the water's being agitated and the microscopic bubbles forming on and in the chain. 
There's not enough time in this video to explain how the ultrasonic cleaner works, but it's a great invention and it seems to work quite well. So stopping the unit about halfway, we'll give the chain a bit of a move around inside and then we'll continue it to the rest of its cleaning process. Right, so it's finished and that's 15 minutes in the ultrasonic cleaner and we'll take a look. A bit of uh, steam coming off the water there. And the chain looking rather clean. Putting our chain on the drying board now, having a closer look at the left hand side, you can see the plates inner and outer, they're rather nice and shiny. And the right hand side of the rollers, they're nice and clean too. Of course these chains have done quite a few kilometres, so the ultrasonic does a good job in bringing up all the pits and scratches on the surface of the chain. Cleaning up afterwards was rather simple, just with a paper towel, wiping the inside of the tank and the basket as well, just needed a bit of a dab and it was fairly clean. Over to the clip-on brush cleaner now, and it allows you to clean your chain while it's on your bike. So to make a fair assessment of how it cleans just the chain, I've cleaned the cogs thoroughly and the front chain rings thoroughly as well, all nice and sparkly clean. So we can just see how the cleaner does the chain. So firstly in the chemicals, degreaser and laundry liquid followed by water. And as you can see, considerably less chemicals compared to the ultrasonic cleaner. Now clip on the unit onto the chain. And we pedal backwards for about two minutes. After unclipping it, we tip it out and you can see it's definitely done some cleaning there, some particles and some of the dissolved wax there. Considering it didn't take a lot of chemicals or our time, we're going to do it again, repeat the process. This time round, we're going to attach this strong magnet to the base of the unit and hopefully it'll attract some of the metal particles. Emptying out our second lot of chemicals. And there's our magnet underneath, so to see what is attracted, we'll have to take out the wheels and the brushes. So we'll do that, and now we'll have a look, and sure enough, there's some metal particles inside there. Taking off the magnet, and you can see it a bit clearer, so there's the proof. Metal ferrous particles do come out of your chain, and it's probably due to chain wear. And cleaning the unit involved taking it apart, washing the parts and reassembling it. And taking a look at the chain on the bike afterwards, it looks really nice and clean and shiny. Hang it on the drying board and have a closer look now. There we go. Left hand side, the plates, inner and outer plates, nice and clean. And the rollers as well, quite nice and clean. Definitely passable. And now it's over to our homemade chain cleaner. If you're not familiar with this unit, you can watch the video Best Homemade Chain Cleaner. Simply put the chain in, add petroleum, this is unleaded standard petrol, put the lid on and shake. Then let it stand for about 10 minutes, come back and shake again. Take the lid off, remove the chain and have a look at the liquid. And as you can see, yes, it's dark. It's definitely taken some waste out of the chain. Because petroleum leaves an oily film, you'll need to degrease your chain. You can use a dummy bike like I am here, or you can simply spray your chain with degreaser and wash it under a tap of water. So using a garden hose, wash off the degreaser. And now taking a look at the chain straight after when it's still wet and it looks clean and shiny, the same as the others. And hanging it on the drying board now and we can have a closer look. And as you can see, it's done a pretty fair job of cleaning the chain on the outside as well.
Right, that's it for the cleaning and drying. They're all nice and dry now. Which one is cleanest? Just by looking at them, it's difficult to tell. They're all nice and shiny, they all look nice and clean. So you put on the specs as I need and have a really close look. Now I had a close look beforehand before recording this and I found the ultrasonic and the homemade cleaner made it a bit cleaner and I'll tell you why because if you get a small instrument there's holes in the chain you can poke through all the holes on the ultrasonic cleaned one all the holes on here are nice and clear you can see straight through so again having a nice close look we can see on the left hand side the holes you can see all the way through to the whiteboard underneath some of the holes are larger than the others but that's just the manufacturing the way they've made the chain and on the right hand side pushing a spoke through you can see there's no wax coming out on the end of that spoke and the same with the homemade cleaner I can see through every hole there's a little bit of water in that one that's because that's the last one I just cleaned so chain number three and again the hollow pins we can see all the way through to the whiteboard at the back and using a spoke we can poke through and no wax coming through the pins there either and if you're wondering why your spoke won't go through the holes that's because this spoke is 16 gauge not 14 gauge so they're all clear as well whereas the brush cleaner the clip-on brush cleaner is a few holes that are still clogged there's a bit of wax on that one and another bit of wax on that one so it's left and another one there so chain number two the brush cleaner a lot of the hollow pins still had wax inside of them So there's quite a few holes where it hasn't got all the wax out and if it hasn't got all the wax out it won't have all the dirt out either. So now the real litmus test, the real test is not that, it's actually putting the chain in isopropyl alcohol or methylated spirits, giving them a shake, letting them sit there for about five hours and shake again and see what sediments come out of the chain. So we're going to do that now. Right, so here's our clean chains and here's our perfectly clean jars, all brand new. I'm going to label them chain number one, number two, and number three. Right, and now we're going to put the chains in them. So number one. And now we're going to fill them with methylated spirits. So a brand new bottle of methylated spirits, just so you know it's not contaminated. <laughs> and we give them all a bit of a shake. Which one come first, which one's where, which one's one, which one's two, three. <laughs> Anyhow, right, we're going to let them sit there for about four or five hours and we'll come back and we'll have a look at the sediment that has come out of the chains. Okay we're back now, um, it's been about five hours and uh, I can see a difference, see if you can see it. What I'm going to do is put some objects behind and you can see through the liquid and see how clear it is. So I'm not going to tell you which jars what till the end. Let's have a look. Uh, I'll take this paintbrush here and you can see it's got some fine hairs on it. So if I put it behind each one you'll see if you can see the individual hairs. Well you don't need good eyesight to see that the left one is definitely clearer than the mid or the right. So now let's stick this yellow ruler behind just to see if the colour yellow makes any difference and of course see if the numbers are clear. Well how are your eyes? I can still see the left one's clearer, then maybe the right's next clearest, and the mid one the least. Righto, so now all we're going to do is just give them a good shake up, and then we'll take the chains out. Using isopropyl alcohol or methylated spirits should be your last step in cleaning your chain. It'll leave your chain perfectly clean, not only on the outside, 
but also in the pins and rollers where it counts. And you can see the sediments on the bottom. You can also see how clear they are. So there we go, that's what came out of the chains after they were cleaned. The left one's definitely cleaner, maybe the right one next and the middle one the worst. Right, the moment we've all been waiting for, which one cleans the best? This one here I would say, and you would say, is the outright winner. Look at that, it's clear as, it's like nothing's been in there. If anything, there's two microscopic little particles in the bottom, that's about all. So that one is the clear winner by far. These two here, we're going to go from worst to best. So this one is murkier and has a little bit of sediment on the bottom. This one is a little bit clearer in the fluid, but has more sediment on the bottom. So not sure, it's a toss up between the two there. We'll go with the dark gray one. And it's number one, it's the ultrasonic cleaner. Ooh, who would have guessed? Number two, the second worst one is the chain brush tool. My goodness, that makes the winner, and I've spilt methylated spirits on it, the homemade cleaning tub. Come out, humble little homemade cleaning tub. You're the winner. There you go, the best way to clean your chain. So, oh, now the chain is ready for its paraffin wax. So, how do you save five watts of your power? Completely clean your chain. Even a brand new chain needs the factory lubricant stripped out then you can apply the paraffin wax. If you've never done this before, you've got to try it. You'll never go back. You'll be amazed at how smooth your drivetrain has become. And now, you just need to watch the next video on how to wax your chain properly. And don't worry, it's still very inexpensive. It's way cheaper than any of the wax-based chain lubricants available on the market today. And now, you're probably wondering, why didn't the ultrasonic cleaner do the best cleaning job? Well, I just repeated the same process again for another 15 minutes. Put in the clean jar, put the methylated spirits in, let it sit there for four hours. And there you go, super clean. It just takes twice as long, half an hour. So the ultrasonic cleaner does do the job, but it took a second attempt. And the clip-on brush cleaner, well that works fine too, but it takes four or five attempts to get that chain clean enough. So, clean your drivetrain properly, paraffin wax the chain, and save your power and your money.